Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm going to be reviewing the version 9.5.2 update that just occurred after the most recent maintenance. So I'm just going to be summarizing and providing my thoughts and opinions on the various updates. As always, it's best to always check the Puzzle and Dragons official Facebook page to get the full patch notes, as I may or may not be skipping certain things or summarizing, so on and so forth. However, without further ado, let's get right at it. So, one of the first things that did get introduced with 9.5.2 was new quests and new badges. And perhaps one of the main complaints of the quest system that um, came out like maybe like a couple months ago was that it was too easy and that a lot of people have actually auto-completed it upon um, opening the game. Like they basically just open up the quest log and it's like, oh, I'm all done, nothing to do here. So they felt a little like, oh, it's just free rewards. It doesn't feel that satisfying. So Gungho is perhaps taking a new approach to this in the sense that they've released these maniac level quest rewards. And these maniac level quest rewards take quite a bit of effort to complete. Most people will not have them auto-completed and it gives you at least something new to strive towards. Furthermore, the badges are also much stronger and are well worth pursuing. So. If you look here, you have to complete either special dungeons, total monsters in your monster book, the 297s, total crowns, and total awoken skills. So completing special dungeons is advantageous to players who've played for a long time because it counts all the various collabs and whatnot from the past. Furthermore, you can probably just complete this by just playing lots, like clearing every single thing that comes out. Always have your special dungeon tab cleared, and you should get this badge relatively fast. The total monsters in your monster book, this is essentially just having basically acquired drops either from dungeons or from the rare machine. So basically the more you roll and the more you play, the more different monsters you've acquired. Furthermore, if you actually evolve your monsters, you actually unlock new slots in your monster book. So even like those weird funky looking drops you get from dungeon descends, just evolve them and then you can just get rid of them as usual. But at least that way you unlock a new slot in your monster book and you get a new badge. Total plus 297 monsters is a lot harder to obtain by comparison because to unlock the badge completely, you need to have 100 plus 297 cards. Not feasible for many people. I haven't even got there myself. I guess I need to maybe start farming more because, to be honest, the dungeons I play don't get plus eggs, so I'm a little out of it because of that. Total crowns refers to your ranking dungeon completion, and it's actually unobtainable to actually unlock this badge right now. I don't even know when it's even possible to obtain it because you need a lot of crowns. So no one has this. No one will have this for a very long time. So don't worry about it right now. And total awoken skills refers to like, if I'm not mistaken, all the different awakenings that can be done via Tamadras. However, if you don't have Tamadras to spare like most people, you can simply say acquire like a Tengu second level, like second evolution, feed other Tengu second evolutions, and unlock awakenings that way technically works as well, it's going to take a long time to get 2,000 Awakening slots for the next team badge. So I'm just going to be going into detail a bit further what all the different badges mean and how they impact your gameplay and playstyle. So the first one is plus 15% team health and minus 300%, minus 300 team cost. And I should mention actually, any of the modifiers to health, recovery, and attack do not take plus eggs into account. So just be aware of that. So for the plus 15% team health, and the minus 300 team cost, you actually lose team cost. So for players who are less high rank, this badge may actually prevent you from using your ideal cards. So just make sure before you actually equip the badge that you can run the team that you want to run. But in regards to plus 15% team health, this is a huge improvement over the plus 5% that was the original badge. Like plus 15% is actually quite sizable because let's say you had 30,000 health with a regular team of lots fully invested, you would basically gain 1,500 more health. That's quite significant at this point. Furthermore, this team cost badge might allow a lot of heart cross leaders to survive the Kali's and rage hit in arena. So this could be something worth pursuing because it might allow you to basically tank out the first hit and then burst her down after the shield goes away. The next badge is plus two seconds to orb movement time. And this badge basically is amazing for say no awakening dungeons where you want that extra time or for teams that want lots of combos and you may struggle to formulate them so this is another great way to gain additional movement time however there is a negative 400 team cost associated with this so it may not be usable for some players next is plus 35 percent team recovery and minus 300 team cost so the 
The, the original recovery badge was plus 25%, so this is a smaller upgrade, but it's still a powerful upgrade. And in my opinion, recovery is generally the best badge to use unless the team health badge allows you to survive certain mechanics or have your team's health go above a certain threshold to survive various execution abilities. Otherwise, I would strongly suggest using the recovery badge unless your team already has spectacular recovery like a Blue Sonya team. Next is those no skyfalls combos. No skyfall combos, yeah. And that is occur that is unlocked via the crowns awakenings or the crown ba crown badge. So no one can acquire this. And to be fair, this new skyfall mechanic is essentially a way to prevent skyfalls from falling down. You match your orbs and nothing falls down. Get your combos, and then after your combos deal damage, orbs fall down, but they don't match, even if they connect. So this is good for speed farming or for players who want to test their skill. However, speed farming is done in co-op mode, so this badge has no applications, and you can't even acquire it, so don't worry about it. Finally, the plus 15% team attack value with the minus 300 cost is strong, but generally speaking, the health and recovery are more important because it's more important to survive, and you usually have enough damage output anyways because you have skill inheritance, stacking active, so on and so forth. However, for dungeons like such as the ranking tournaments, this plus 15% attack badge will be the most valuable because it allows you to make potentially one less combo and you can sweep a floor faster. So that is where the team attack badge is most valuable. Next up in terms of content and updates is the sixth latent awakening skill slot. So this allows you to actually gain one additional latent slot. Instead of having five, you now have six. However, this special Tamadra is relatively hard to acquire, and in order to do this fusion properly, it has to be plus 297, and the recipient monster also has to be plus 297 and fully awoken. So you are essentially losing a plus 297 monster for one more latent slot. Say you give it like a plus health latent slot, or a plus health latent Tamadra, you've gained maybe a couple plus eggs worth of stats, and you just sacrifice 297 for that. Uh, and it's, is it really worthwhile? Maybe if you have like excessive, excessive amounts of 297s to spare and you truly love that team and are believing that that team will have value for many months to come, then sure, that monster or that team could benefit from the skill, um, additional latent slot. However, perhaps the most valuable one is a skill delay resist, so you can actually resist more skills. But in all honesty, this is unnecessary for probably 99% of the player base because who really has that many 297s to throw around to gain something so marginal at best? But however it is there, some people will definitely use it. You may want to use it maybe for your favorite monster just so you get a bit more popular, so on and so forth. New evolutions. So there were four new evolutions released with this update, including Krishna, Vishnu, Ganesha, and Kushinadahim. I probably pronounced a few of those wrong, but that is what I'm famous for. And I'm just going to be summarizing briefly like how it's going to change the meta and whether or not I'm going to write an article about them. So for Krishna, it is perhaps the savior of all fire monsters and fire boxes because Awoken Kao Kao is kind of more niche farming and Xiang Mei has, is on the decline and is restricted to use as also a monster point card as well. So right now, a lot of players have a great fire box, but nowhere to use these cards on. So this Krishna is going to be the best thing that's ever happened. Like, if I had a Krishna, I would use him because Krishna can clear Arena 3, it can clear the one-shot challenge, and other endgame content because it is so powerful. You're tanky and you have huge damage. And furthermore, I am going to be doing a full team building guide on him, and it's very high on my priority list. So look forward to that. Stay tuned for that maybe in the next couple of days at the very most. On the other hand, Vishnu, who was once a superstar sub, is now... Okay, mostly because TPA has is on the decline because a lot of the best wood leaders are combo based. Like yes, Vishnu could be used in Ranave, so there is an improvement there. But Vishnu has less value compared to say Krishna or Saraswati as a leader because he doesn't do either role as well. Saraswati does the explosive damage much better. Krishna is much stronger all around. So Vishnu is kind of just an awkward place. It's not to say he's bad, but he's just not as spectacular as he used to be. Ganesha has basically gone from zero to hero because this new evolution allows you to actually acquire additional rank experience from uh, completing a dungeon. So this means that experience of a lifetime will award you more experience as well as Monday dungeon. 
Furthermore, you are able to form a dual Ganesha leader team to farm Monday Dungeon and rank up non-stop to I don't know how high. Like you can go to excessively high level ranks. So players are now going to rank up like crazy and you will be seeing players that are very high rank but they may not actually have much progression because they maybe use Ganesha spamming in Monday Dungeon because it's more efficient than say even Super Ultimate Dragon Rush which is a much harder dungeon to clear by comparison and Monday will be faster. So it's interesting to say the least, like we're going to have a lot of inflated ranks in terms of players, but have no fear, like rank is useful, but it's not necessarily going to help you out later on in the game. Like once you have enough stamina or enough team costs, you technically are okay, especially if you don't restore your stamina with magic stones. And I will be doing a follow-up article discussing Ganesha's team to farm Monday Dungeon and why it's important, so on and so forth, at a later date, but it's less important than Krishna. And finally, Kushinadahim is a mouthful to say and even worse to type out, so a lot of times it's abbreviated to Kush. But Awoken Kush is basically a high skill combo leader because you actually cap out at 169 times attack with 10 combos. However, no skyfalls can occur. So you will match your orbs and no new orbs will fall down. That sounds weird, but it also has benefits because it will test your player's skill because if you make only five combos, you're only going to have five combos made. Furthermore, it actually has beautiful damage control because you never can get extra combos out of her leader skill. Say you're fighting someone like Sopdet, you make five combos, you only get five combos. So that is interesting. Like It's a new mechanic. It'll be fun to play. I think I'm going to play around with her because I have her on both accounts. So maybe do some videos, maybe a brief article, but lower priority than Krishna, of course, because she's not as game-breaking, but she is stronger. So next up in terms of improvements for the 9.5.2 update is bonus monster experience. So basically all the water or sapphire dragons, as well as the water snow globes, now provide an additional monster experience. So now you can feed a snow globe and it gives more experience. Woo! This is great, it's a buff all around. However, as I mentioned in my previous articles, it's basically a foreshadowing for monsters with higher experience curves. It's kind of a way to help fight or compensate against that because those reincarnated evolutions, which we don't have yet, but will soon, have much larger experience curves and this will help combat that. Next up is various quality of life improvements, and quality of life improvements help everyone. Even if all the above does not benefit you in some way, shape, or form, these quality of life will help you, and it makes the life game more fun to play because it's less cumbersome, it's more intuitive, and it's less time consuming when you're trying to deal with various aspects of the game. So I'm just going to be summarizing the more noteworthy quality of life improvements, and it starts with these multiplayer changes. And these multiplayer changes allow you to share your room more intelligently because you can either share with all your friends like we have done before, or you can share with one friend in particular. Now, with the one friend in particular, you have to physically select that friend from your list, so I would suggest you either favorite them or have some way to have them closer to the top of your screen. But this allows you to streamline and prevent room sniping because if sometimes you share your room, say you have lots of friends, <clears throat> Other people join and you're like, I didn't want that, I want to kick them out, losing time, so on and so forth. Now the share to one friend, you're able to actually have that one friend join and only that friend. That friend can still find your room like they naturally would, so they lose no time on their end. And if you have that friend set up in such a way you can click them quickly, you, say you don't lose any time, prevent room sniping. And this will actually improve, I guess, the life of farming, say, star treasure thieves den because or tamadra infestation so on and so forth because now when people share the room they're sharing it to all their friends and it's kind of expected join me join me whereas before it was kind of like do i join this person or not so this is good next is selling monsters after dungeon completion and this should have been maybe implemented a long time ago but it's going to be such an amazing way because now we can bypass various other screens as well as no longer canceling our co-op room for replaying so that means you can sell your monsters in game or in the completion screen, and then you can instantly go into the next co-op room with your partner because now your room will no longer be cancelled because you had a full monster box. This will save you lots of time and it's quite wonderful, in my opinion. And this kind of almost goes a bit hand in hand with this check reward system. And basically this is a new feature that allows that is turned off on default by default, so you have to turn it on. Um, through like your options menu, but this allows you to actually have a physical OK button at the end of your completion screen because uh, 
a lot of times players will say hold down their screen and it'll just skip through everything and it goes and exits it. This is bad if you want to take like say completion screenshots because that way you can actually take the completion screenshot or this can allow you to take um, sell your monsters in the dungeon completion window without compromising the co-op room by selling them outside. So that way you can hold down the button, skip the animations, sell your monsters in completion screen, hit OK, rejoin your partner. It can save time in certain cases, but sometimes people may not want to have this, so you can turn it, have it off by default and just do as normal. In addition to selling monsters, they actually allow us to now sell 30 at a time. I don't know why there's a cap still, but hey, this is going to save us a lot of button pressing and a lot of time. So why not? We can sell more monsters. Hooray! In addition to all these changes, there was a best friend reset. It's kind of a misleading word reset. It's more of a refresh because you can actually choose a brand new best friend without losing your previous best friends. You can read more about it in my best friend guide, which you can click here. And this whole article will be in the video description down below. So you can find the article and click here or just basically search up best friend guide by Fantastic, and it will come up. In addition, we also have the rank 150 and 250 memorial rerolls, memorial rolls resetting. And basically it allows you if to pull a special egg machine if you're above 150 and rank 250. So if you're above rank 250, you get two pulls, and you should pull these right away because these machines are not impacted by Godfest, Galas, or anything of those nature. So just pull right away and enjoy the monster that comes out. It's free, you can't really complain because at worst you got 5,000 monster points, or 10,000 twice, if you pull twice. So, in conclusion, like the 9.5.2 update brings quite a few nice changes, a lot of nice quality of life improvements that I think are good. It brings a nice new quest badge system, which is exciting because it gives players something new to work towards, as well as new evolutions that are fun, especially Krishna, who is basically an endgame leader that makes use of your firebox. So, there's also, I guess, something else to keep in mind, is that there is was a data push, actually, for the art contest Sukuya and Kali, so you could pull those from the PAL machine in the very near future, so just keep that in mind. But overall, what changes have got you the most excited? Like, what quality of life or evolutions or so on and so forth are you most excited about? So let me know in the comments below. This article is in the description below the video, and have a fantastic day, and happy puzzling!